series. And through the miracle of television, I've been able to introduce literally millions of people to the fantastic world of painting. And now I'd like to spend a few minutes with you and introduce you to the Bob Ross style of wet on wet painting. What is wet on wet painting? First, it doesn't require long, difficult periods of study, drawing, or sketching before you can even get to place a brush on canvas. It's free and expressive. It's a super way of fulfilling your dreams of creating beautiful paintings. Most important, it happens very quickly. But that doesn't mean that practice and determination aren't important. It means that you will see immediate results and that that will encourage you to continue on. But remember, an artist is seldom completely satisfied with his or her paintings. There's always the feeling that you can improve. You will always know in your heart that your next painting will be that long-awaited masterpiece. Technically, when we use the term wet on wet, it means starting with a wet canvas surface of my base coat liquid white, liquid black, or liquid clear, which allows you to move and blend your colors on the canvas. Wet on wet also means layering thin and thick paints on canvas. Through my collection of varied instructional materials and painting tools, I make it possible for you to learn and enjoy what could be a lifetime of painting pleasure. The first of my instructional materials, of course, are my Joy of Painting books, which I have written and presented in a very concise, detailed, and understandable manner. I do this not only with written instructions, but also with hundreds of how-to photographs that will lead you step by step through each phase of the painting. All of my books are written with the idea that you are painting in my technique for the very first time. Each volume contains 13 different painting projects as shown on television. Each project provides you with a new and different learning experience. Notice how each project instruction is set up separately with a list of materials for that project identified at the beginning and with step-by-step -step written instructions and photographs following. There is no need to flip back and forth to other parts of the book. These books are excellent teaching guides and will increase your understanding of the Bob Ross wet-on-wet -wet technique. Additional instructional aids are available to you in a series of videotapes which I have produced. These tapes provide you with an excellent means of seeing my technique in action. These tapes include detailed close-ups and are the next best thing to being in the classroom. Best of all, you are led step by step to a beautiful finished painting, while at the same time learning the varied aspects of the Bob Ross technique. We are continuing to adding new video titles. Be sure to ask for our free brochure which shows our complete collection. Now let me introduce you to my tools and show you what they will do. This is the Bob Ross product line, a complete line of the finest products available for the wet and wet painting technique. I've had the pleasure of either personally designing and developing these products or working with the engineers and chemists who manufacture the materials to my specification. Years of experience and working with students went into the design of each piece of equipment and I sincerely believe that these materials will allow you to achieve the best possible results from your painting efforts. Now let's show you some of the different pieces of equipment and I'll demonstrate how they are used to create unique and beautiful effects. First of all, the one and two inch brushes. Both of these brushes are made with the finest Chinese bore and ox bristles. Although they resemble everyday house painting brushes, they are high quality artist brushes designed for the wet on wet painting technique. You will find that having two of each of these brushes will save you a tremendous amount of paint as well as a great deal of brush cleaning time. Use one brush for your dark colors and one for light colors. The two inch brush is used to apply liquid white, liquid black, or liquid clear. A thin, even coat is all that is necessary. Once your base coat is applied, use long horizontal and vertical strokes to assure an even distribution of liquid white, black, or clear over the entire canvas. The two inch brush is also used to paint the sky areas of your painting. Load the brush with a small amount of sky color, then use crisscross strokes working from the top downward to paint the sky. The sky colors will mix with the liquid white on the canvas and automatically your sky will get lighter and lighter toward the horizon. Allowing the sky color to become lighter toward the horizon will help create the illusion of depth or distance in your painting. Both the one and two inch brushes are excellent for making large fluffy cloud shapes. Normally, cloud shapes are made and blended using very small circular patterns. 
when blending individual clouds, use the top corner of the two inch brush to blend the base of each cloud. Then lift upward. And then use long horizontal strokes to complete the clouds. Glue the one or two inch brush to a very sharp chisel edge by pulling it through the paint in one direction. Wiggle the brush as you pull it through the paint to draw the paint to the end of the bristles. This sharpens the brush. A large amount of paint is required to stick the bristles together to form the chisel edge. The indication of distant trees can be made very simply with either the one or two inch brush loaded to a sharp chisel edge. Use downward strokes to create this effect. You may use just the corner of the brush held horizontally or turn the brush vertically to create numerous shapes in distant foothills. As many layers of tree indications as desired may be created. Leaving a misty area between each layer and allowing each layer to get darker in color will increase the depth in your painting. Beautiful, realistic evergreen trees may also be painted with a one or two inch brush loaded to a chisel edge. Tap the brush, held vertically, to the canvas to create a center line. Then use just the corner of the brush to paint individual limbs and branches. Force the bristles to bend downward, applying more and more pressure as you work your way down the tree. Highlights are applied in the same manner using a lighter color. Leaf trees and bushes can also be made with both the one and two inch brushes. Pull the brush firmly through the paint in one direction, loading the bristles full of color. By pulling the bristles through the paint in one direction, a curve will be created on one corner of the brush. Turn this rounded corner of the brush upward and push in your basic tree and bush shapes. Do not allow the brush to slide. Touch the canvas and push slightly upward to give your foliage a leafy appearance. Turn the brush to create individual branches. This step is normally accomplished using a dark base color so that lighter highlights will stand out. I like to use the one-inch landscape brush to apply the highlights to individual bushes and trees. Load the one-inch brush the same way, rounding one corner. The most common mistake made is not loading enough paint. Then you must strike the canvas hard to get the paint to come off the brush. A properly loaded brush requires only a gentle touch to the canvas to paint the highlights. Touch the canvas with a rounded corner up and gently push upward to create the illusion of leaves. Turn the brush slightly as you paint to give shape and form to your foliage. Think about limbs that not only project to the sides, but also project toward you to create shape in your tree or bush. Try not to paint the same area over and over, or your color will become dull or turn to mud. If you find you are having trouble making your paint stick, add a small amount of liquid white or paint thinner to your color. Remember, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. The two inch brush is excellent for making one of the most fantastic effects in this style of painting, reflections. Touch the canvas and pull straight down. The color will slide on the wet surface and blend downward. A few gentle horizontal strokes will complete the reflections. With a little practice, you will learn to literally push and pull your reflections to create even more dramatic effects. We use two bristle fan brushes in this technique, a number three fan brush and a number six fan brush. Both of these brushes have firm bristles designed for use with our firm dry oil colors. With practice, you will find the fan brush to be one of the most versatile of all artist brushes. The fan brush can be used to create beautiful fluffy clouds that just float around the sky all day and have fun. With a fully loaded brush, make basic cloud shapes by using the corner of the fan brush in small circular patterns. Try to keep the brush moving and avoid overworking an area. Work to create individual shapes in your clouds. The large brush is then used to blend the base of each cloud. Lift upward, then blend the entire sky with long horizontal strokes. Tree trunks can be made in a single stroke with the edge of your fan brush. Load one side of the brush with dark color and the other side with a light color. Touch the canvas and pull downward, increasing the pressure as you go. By double loading the brush, you can paint both sides of the trunk at once. This is also an excellent way of laying in a large tree trunk then highlighting with a knife. 
the indication of distant trees is made with a fully loaded fan brush held vertically. Tap firmly downward to create beautiful tree shapes or foothills. Be careful not to leave too much distance between individual tree tops or your trees can end up looking like fence posts. Another fantastic effect that can be made with a fan brush is evergreen trees. This is an excellent method for painting delicate, detailed evergreen trees. Hold the brush vertically and touch the canvas to make a center line. Then use just the corner of the brush, held horizontally, to paint individual branches. Force the bristles to bend downward, applying more and more pressure as you work down the tree. Highlights are applied to the tree in the same manner. The fan brush is an excellent tool for making happy little waterfalls and bubbling streams. Normally, the paint is thinned with a small amount of liquid white. You can then paint over the top of thicker paints without the colors blending together. Pay close attention to angles and allow your water to flow naturally. The fan brush is also used throughout seascape paintings. Such effects as waves, foam, and splashing water are only a few of the creations you can make with this fan brush. You may also use the fan brush to paint rocks, roads, mountains, soft grassy areas, and to create many other fantastic and beautiful effects, too numerous to discuss in this short tape. Devote some time to practice with this brush, and the rewards will be well worth the time you spend. The one inch round brush is made with the same fine natural bristles as the one and two inch brushes. This unique brush is very popular and can be used to create entire paintings. The one inch round brush is especially good for painting distant tree and bush shapes. Load the brush by tapping it into a small amount of color. Once the brush is loaded, tap downward to create individual tree and bush shapes. I normally start at the base of the foliage and work upward so the darker shadow colors remain on the bottom of the shapes. Highlights may then be added in the same manner, tapping downward with the top corner of the brush. Large, more detailed trees and bushes may also be painted with this fantastic brush. Start by loading a dark base color and tapping in the basic tree and bush shapes. Form and shape are much more important for foliage that is in the foreground of your painting. Once you are satisfied with the basic shapes, highlights may be added. Highlights are applied with a slightly thinner paint, tapping downward, striking the canvas gently with the top bristles only. If you have trouble making the paint stick, thin your highlight colors with a small amount of liquid white or paint thinner. Work in layers, completing the most distant tree and bushes first. To give depth to your foliage, leave dark areas between each clump of highlights. With a little practice, you'll be amazed at what you can paint with a round brush. The number six filbert brush is a very high quality artist brush designed to be used with a wet on wet painting technique. I use the filbert brush mainly in seascapes. It is especially adapted to making beautiful foam when crashing waves, foam patterns in the surf, and numerous other water effects. This brush is also excellent for making clouds, trees, rocks, stones, and a multitude of other effects. The number two script liner brush is the smallest of all of our brushes. This brush has very long bristles, giving it the ability to hold large volumes of paint. The liner brush, when loaded, comes to a very sharp point and is used to paint fine details. Normally, we thin the paint to an ink-like consistency with paint thinner when using the liner brush. Individual tree limbs, sticks, and twigs may be painted with a thin paint. If you have trouble making the paint flow on the canvas, chances are the paint is not thin enough. Add more paint thinner and see if that won't cure the problem. The script liner brush is also used for the most important part of the painting, your signature. I also suggest you put the year the painting was completed with your signature, and years later you can look back and remember when you painted this masterpiece. The complete line of Bob Ross oil paints have been specifically designed to my specifications for the wet on wet painting technique. These paints are very dry and firm in comparison to traditional oil paints with the exception of highlight colors, which are manufactured to a thinner consistency for easier application. This unique consistency allows us to paint layers of paint over one another without becoming a mud mixer. You will find these paints made from the highest quality pigments 
they are very smooth, and you'll love the beautiful color tones. All of my colors are produced by the Martin F. Weber Company, who have been manufacturing fine artist paints for over 100 years. Liquid white, liquid black, and liquid clear are all slow-drying base coat mediums designed to make the canvas wet and slick, yet tacky. These specially formulated oil mediums allow us to mix and blend color right on the canvas, rather than spending a great deal of time mixing color on the palette. The slick surface allows us to literally move paint on the canvas and to create effects almost effortlessly that normally would be quite difficult. These three mediums are also used to thin other colors for application over thicker paints. For example, painting highlights on trees and bushes. Liquid white is the most used of the three mediums. Liquid black is excellent when there are large dark areas in your painting or you wish to create a mood or to transform a daylight scene into night. Liquid clear is used in areas where color should remain true or transparent, such as seascapes. These mediums may also be mixed together to create new and different effects. Use the two inch brush to apply the liquid mediums to your canvas. The most common mistake is applying too much liquid white, black, or clear. So be sure to apply only a thin, even coat. Do not allow the base coat to dry before you begin painting. There are two Bob Ross painting knives, the number five knife and the number 10 knife. These two knives are specifically designed to help you achieve the best results from your painting efforts. You'll find that the tapered handle fits the hand and balances the knife. I designed the blades with straight edges to make loading and using the knives easier and more effective. The smooth, flexible blades will also prove to be an asset when you are painting with either of these two knives. The snow white handles and the rust free chrome type finish on the blades truly makes this a handsome piece of equipment that will enhance your painting abilities. The knife is not only used to mix paints but is also a fantastic painting tool. Load the knife by pulling the paint out flat on the palette, then cut across the paint to load a small roll of paint on the very edge of the blade. It is most important to load the knife properly. Once the knife is loaded correctly, you can create numerous fantastic effects, such as laying in the initial mountain shapes, use very little paint on the knife, and apply with a firm pressure. You are only concerned with the top edge of your mountain at this time. Firmly scrape off all excess paint using the knife. Then blend downward with a large brush. This helps create the illusion of mist at the base of the mountain and removes excess paint. With a small roll of paint, using no pressure, apply highlights and shadows to the mountain. Allow the paint to break as you move down the side of the mountain. Angles are very important and care should be taken to assure your mountains look right. Practice and patience with this technique will yield beautiful results that will amaze you as well as your family and friends. The knife is also excellent for making land areas, rocks, stones, roads, beaches, snow, and many other effects too numerous to mention. With practice, entire pictures can be painted using only the knife. Loading the knife properly and a gentle touch will pay great dividends, so devote some time to making friends with this fantastic tool. Buildings, such as cabins and barns, are especially fun to paint with a knife. Old, weathered wood can be painted using the same techniques we use to paint snow on the mountains. One of the easiest, most effective ways I've found to paint a cabin is to start by scraping out a general shape with a knife. This allows you to lay out the cabin shape and removes excess paint from the canvas. Next, use the knife to fill in your basic cabin shape with color, paying close attention to angles. Should you decide you want a log cabin, start with a small roll of lighter color on the knife and pull slightly to the side to paint vertical logs on the top part of the cabin. Redefine your dark color on the base of the cabin, then use the knife to paint the indication of horizontal logs on the front and side. Doors, windows, and small details are added as desired. Use the small knife for delicate detail subjects or just to get into small areas, you will find that both knives can create some of the most fantastic effects imaginable. 
beautiful evergreen trees can be painted with a knife. Unlike brush painted trees, evergreens painted with a knife will have texture and form when dry. Once mastered, you will find these unique trees to be a favorite among those who view your paintings. Start with a small amount of dark color on the very point of the knife and just touch the canvas, moving the tip of the blade from side to side. Reload the knife frequently with larger amounts of paint as you work down the tree. Continue to work from side to side, using more and more of the knife blade as the tree gets wider. Highlights and shadows are added with the long edge of the knife. Load a small roll of paint on the blade and gently pull to the side. The color will stick to the high points on your trees, leaving the dark center areas intact. A little practice is usually required to master this technique, but the results are well worth the efforts. The palette I use and recommend is made of a clear acrylic, which is lightweight and easy to clean. I designed and built my first acrylic palette over 20 years ago, and since its introduction through the TV series, the idea of an acrylic palette has become popular among artists all over the country. This palette is non-porous, has sufficient work area for large brushes, and is clear so as not to distort color. Colors are placed on the outside edge of the palette, saving the inside space as a work area for mixing paint and loading brushes and knives. I normally place dark colors at one end of the palette and light colors on the other end. Try to always load your palette with the colors in the same location so you don't have to waste a lot of time trying to figure out where a color is located. A double primed, pre-stretched canvas is recommended for this technique. Avoid canvas boards as they will absorb the liquid white and leave you with a dry surface. The type of canvas used is an individual choice. I like a fairly smooth canvas, but some painters prefer a canvas with more tooth. For scenes that require black canvas, prime a white canvas with black gesso. The specially designed acrylic primer is made to prepare surfaces for our style of painting. Allow the black gesso to dry completely before applying your transparent base colors. The black canvases may very well produce some of the most striking paintings in this technique. To clean your brushes, wash them thoroughly with paint thinner. Brushes are scrubbed against a screen in the bottom of a can to remove the paint. The screen allows the solid materials to settle to the bottom and your paint thinner remains relatively clean. Firmly beat the bristles to dry the brush. A brush beater rack may save your decor as well as your happy home. This simple device fits in the bottom of a waste paper basket and allows you to clean the brush inside of the basket to contain the splattering. I also recommend you use only odorless paint thinner such as turpinoid. The smell of commercial paint thinners can be overwhelming. Avoid washing your one and two inch brushes with soap and water. If you would like more painting ideas and experience using the wet on wet technique, our award-winning series of books offers many other fantastic painting projects. Each book is designed as a companion guide to a Joy of Painting television series and contains 13 projects, complete with full-color reproductions and step-by-step -step written and photographic instructions for each painting. You may find that once you have mastered the basics of this technique, you can paint the pictures using only the step-by-step how-to photos. Our extensive library of video teaching tapes offers you detailed step-by-step -step instructions that will lead you to a completed project. These professionally produced video cassettes allow you to take private, individual lessons with some of the country's most popular and talented artists and craftsmen. Video tapes are available that not only teach my technique, but by other fantastic teachers who are willing to share their secrets. Here are just a few of the tapes that are available which will take you one step at a time through beautiful projects such as Country Painting with Dorothy Dent, Fabric and Wipeout Painting with Georgia Fiesel, Seascapes with Joyce Ortner, Knife Painting with Art Kerner, Decoy Painting with B.B. Hopper, Acrylics and Watercolor with Betty Denton, Pastels with Fern Sirwa, Flowers with Marilyn White, and one of my personal favorites, Fred Rowe teaches you how to sculpt a cowboy with sculpy clay and tools found around the house. 
these are only a few of the many talented instructors available, and we are continually adding new titles to our video library. You will find video one of the best ways to learn in the privacy of your own home and at your own pace. For those who would like a class with an exceptionally well-trained instructor, the Bob Ross Organization sponsors a group of nationally certified traveling art instructors who are available to teach for art and craft shops, organizations, or private groups. Each of these instructors has been hand-picked and trained and are fully guaranteed by our company. Classes are designed so that students receive both group and individual instructions, and each person completes a full-size oil painting from start to finish each day. Students range from absolute beginners to experienced painters, and by the end of the day, everyone is amazed and pleased at what they have accomplished. Classes are intense, but most people would never believe learning could be so enjoyable. And the most rewarding part of all is when you show your completed painting to your family and friends who will not believe their own eyes. There is also a program that teaches and certifies individuals who wish to teach this fantastic style of painting. More information is available upon request. I hope you have enjoyed this videotape and I would like to thank you for allowing me to introduce you to my technique and to the materials we use. I sincerely believe that the information contained in this tape is sufficient to get you started with one of the most expressive art forms available. Devote some time to practice and allow each painting to be a learning experience. And I also hope that through painting you find a new love and that you take the time to share that love with everyone you come in contact with. And through that sharing, you too will truly experience the joy of painting. From the entire Joy of Painting staff, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless. Thank you.